Today is all about linked lists. Join me as I break it down for you guys through interactive lessons as well as interactive code. If you're ready for this new data structure, I'm beyond ready. Let's dive in. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Code with Josh. For super obvious reasons, if you didn't guess it, I'm Josh. I'm stoked to have you guys here. If you're ready to learn linked lists, do me a favor and like this video, okay? That really does help me on a smaller channel, helps me grow and reach more students around the world. And if you're new here, subscribe, as I do have daily content coming out all dedicated to helping you in your Python journey. Guys, real quick, in case you missed it, you can get my three free Python courses, over 30 hours of content, as well as this handcrafted data structure cheat sheet that I made for this mini series of data structures and algorithms. You can head down to the links in the description and show your support, all of it's free, all right? But if you wanna join premium, I do have a premium newsletter, all dedicated to Python, and you can get a free trial down there while you're at it. All right, enough chit chat. We're all here for linked lists. Let's dive into the interactive lessons I have for us. We're diving into this new data structure of linked lists. Let's do it. Now we first need to address what is a linked list. Now you're already thinking about a list that you know, which is good. Let's build on that. Now, here I have a brief illustration okay, of a linked list, which isn't real, right? But you can see here that each element is a node, okay? So how we can view a linked list is it's really a linear data structure, okay? Each element in this linear data structure is a node, all right? Now in this node, it contains data as well as a key to the next node, okay? So in one element in this list, it has two things. It has data as well as a key or a reference to the next node in our linked list, okay? This is great because it allows us to form a sequence without the need for all that memory allocation, okay? It's saving us space. It's allowing our code to run faster. It's more optimized, all right? Now, there are many reasons to use a linked list, and I've only put five here. We could use this for cases of dynamic sizing. As I've mentioned, it allows for a bit more flexible memory management, not as much space is being used. By using a linked list, we can implement stacks as well as queues better. If you missed it, I talked about stacks in my first episode of Data Structures the other week. Head on back and check that out. That was like an entry level data structure. I can use linked lists with stacks to implement them more effectively and efficiently. We could use that to handle variable length data. And the one that I'm gonna talk about today is it's really efficient for insertions and deletions. I chose this one as this is an easy introduction to linked lists. If you guys like this kind of stuff, let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see more advanced implementations of linked lists, I can do that for us as well. Okay, so these are a few use cases that we could use a linked list. Key takeaway here is each element is a node. Each node contains data as well as a reference to the next node. Well, let's look at a linked list behind the scenes. I wanna begin down here with this illustration I put together. This is in my data structure cheat sheet, okay? Um, so head down to the description and grab that while you're here. So you can imagine each of these as a node, okay? In the node, the first node, we have a head, and then we have a pointer, okay? Now, I like travel, so I worked this around travel. If we picture it like travel, all right, we have an origin, it's where we start, and we get on that flight. And that flight takes us to the next destination. We then get off the flight and that same plane takes new passengers to Paris. Okay, that's kind of how this works, all right? So one node is our data, as well as the reference to the next node, okay? It's kind of like an airplane. If you get on an airplane, most flights don't go New York to Paris, back and forth, all day, right? They take passengers there, and then they go to a different destination. When they're going to that different destination, that's like your key, the reference to the next node. 
all right? So here's that illustration. Now, really, we need to know OOP for this, all right? Because we're gonna have a node class as well as a linked list class. Now, the node class represents each element in our linked list. And as we know, a node contains data, sorry for that, as well as a link to the next node. Okay, that's great. That's really all we need, all right? The linked list class is a manager. This manager controls the functionality of a linked list, all right? So manager manages our nodes. And the manager really creates the head, right? The first one in our linked list. It has the ability to append, delete items, as well as just show items in our linked list. Now remember, I'm showing you guys today an effective way to check for insertions and deletions. This is just one of the reasons we use a linked list, okay? For other ones, we could implement this differently. If you guys like this, all right, do me a favor and like where we're at now and subscribe. That does help. All right, now moving on. Let's look at a node broken down. So really a node is just the simplest form of a class, all right? It's kind of like a data class, all right? So I'm creating a class node, and then it just has data as well as next. Now, next is a popular naming convention you will see with linked lists. This is the reference. This is the key to our next node. Now, the first time we create a node, right, It it doesn't have anything, it's none. There is nothing next because I need another node to connect it to, to link it to. All right, so this is really just our node. That's all we need. It holds data as well as a key. The initial value is none. That brings us to our manager, our linked list class. Here we can imagine our linked list class as our head is we're really just creating a head Okay, and if we look at an append method, okay, when I append a new element, a new node, I need to create a node while I'm appending it. So here you can see I'm creating a new node from the node class, right? We are first going to check to make sure there is no head, because if there's not a head, this is the first node. I need to create the head. If there's already a head, I'm going to store that, and we're going to say while next right, current next. Remember, next was the property in the node class. The first node was none. So this loop would be while none. It's not going to run. But while there is a next node, we can append, all right? I'll implement this with us. We could also create delete, right, the steps for deleting, all right? We check to see the head. We can also repeat a certain task. And the final one would be display, right? I can just display a certain element node in my linked list, all right? So pause the video here if you need to, all right? But I'm gonna implement this with you guys right now in VS Code. All right, here I am in VS Code. Let's do two things. I'm gonna say node, and then let's just say linked list. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is create that node. And if you remember, we can just come down here, all right, I'm gonna call it node. And inside, we're just gonna create a brief constructor. Now this constructor is gonna take self as well as some data, okay? That's all it's gonna take. Inside, we can create a property for data to store that data. And because this is the first node, is there a next node? No, there's none currently. We will assign that in the manager. Okay, so this is really the, the class node, it's, it's done, all right? This is each element in that linked list, all right? Now it's just time to create our manager, the actual linked list manager itself. So I'll come here, we could say class linked list. Okay, good naming practice here. And I will create in it. Now I want you to think about that. Why do I need in it? What am I creating here? Okay, so think about that. Who are we managing? Well, we're managing the head. So I'm actually gonna create the head, but currently there's no, there is no head, all right? I need to append the first node. That's what's gonna create this head for us. So we have a few things. I could append, right? We could delete, and we could just display. 
Okay, and outside here, this will be for testing. I'm gonna run my code down here. Very quickly, right, I could just say node one equals node. We could give it some data. So let's just say five, node two, 10. Okay, uh, print off, let's say node one data, just to see what you have, right? But all we have is a basic class. I should just see my output of five. Boom, and there you go. Okay, so everything's working, all right? Um, I'm ready for the append functionality, so I'm gonna jump in here. I'm gonna call it append, and we need to choose what data are we appending, right? So you can view this as just like the append method for a list in Python. When we use append, we put an item that we wanna append to the list inside. We're doing the same thing with data, but now with that data, we can do different things. We need to because we're working with a linked list instead of a normal list. Now that we're inside here, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna create a new node because I'm trying to append. So I'll create a node, and then what are we appending? The data that we give the append. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that there's nothing in there, okay? So I'm gonna say if not self.head or if this is not none, right, then I'm gonna take my head and I'm gonna say my head is now the new node. So I've created the head. I can return that now, all right? We have that head created. Um, otherwise, I already have a head. So I'm gonna create like this variable, which is my current node. And I'm just gonna say, I need a place to store the head now. While we do have our next one available, so current next, while there is a next node, then we're gonna say current is equal to the current next. I wanna to go to the next node, okay? When that stops, my current next node is going to be equal to our new node, all right? So this is our ability to append. While current is not none, then the current becomes our next node. The current next node, that is our new node. So append is done, okay? Let's implement how do we delete an item from a linked list, all right? So a few of the same things we need to check for. Let's give some space here. I will say delete. What are we deleting? Our data, again, okay? So if our head's like empty, then I just need to return. I can't really delete anything. So I'm just gonna return. If the current head, the current item's data is equal to our data parameter that we're looking to delete, right? So if I'm on the current version of it and that's the data I want to delete, then I'm just gonna update the head. And I'm gonna say, hey, the head is now equal to the next one, not the current one, because I just deleted that. We can then return that. Um, one of those conditions should be met, okay? Um, I'm gonna create that current again, and we're just gonna store our head somewhere. While we do have the next one, while current is not none, we then need to make sure that our current next data, so the next node's data is equal to the data that we're looking for. And if it is, we can say current next is equal to current, I need to tap two nodes ahead. So next, next, we will return that. Then we can say our current node is just equal to the next node. Okay, so we effectively, if we have a linked list, right, we are just removing a node and then putting the list together. Okay, so I'm taking it out of its placement, all right? We're pretty much done, but in order to test this properly, I wanna be able to display and see what's inside of this linked list, all right? So let me demonstrate that in a unique way. Let's just come down here and I'm gonna create a display method. Boom, boom, boom. I'll just create a method here called display. This doesn't take any data because I wanna see the whole linked list, right? So uh, I'll just say display. I'll create a current variable which is gonna hold our head for us. While we do have a head, because even if I have one node, I can still see that node. So while current is one or something, um, what would we like to implement here? Well, I just wanna print off, let's take our current, let's print off the current data, and then let's say end is equal to, just make sure there's an end in there. Um, great, and then to update it, we'll say current is equal to our current dot next node. Okay, so that'll print off the next one, uh, wonderful. Here on the outside here, just to give some space, I'll just say print again. 
Um, okay, so really everything's done. This looks really good, all right? Let's just delete this texting stuff. Now that you have everything deleted, let's just create a list called my list is equal to our linked list. And I'm gonna go through here and let's do this a few times. I'm gonna show you a few things. Let's say append one, I'm gonna copy and paste this, uh, say two or three times, so like one, two, three. Okay, let's update those values. So two, three, four. All right, um, and then let's just come down here and say my list, let's display. Let's see what's inside here, okay? Voila, and you can see one, two, three, four, right? That is exactly what we have in our linked list. All right, so if I were to come down now and I were to say like my list dot delete, let's delete like the number two from my list. And then if we display that again, we pretty much just remove it exactly where it was, keeping our list together. Well, okay, so here's something interesting. Um, I'm seeing the same thing. So I'm not, I'm not actually deleting properly. Let me go up here, let's check our delete. So uh, def delete, we have our data. If there is no head return, so head is equal to data, this is good, self head, next, return. Oh, this is why, current next, I, ext, extension. Okay, let me run that. Boom, okay, one, three, four, there you go. So we ideally just remove two and we smush the list together. That's all we did there. Okay, great. Now I wanna show you something kind of unique. So let me just turn this, I'll just delete it. Okay, I'm gonna say I real quick. I'll say I is one, let's say four in range, uh, let's say 20. My list dot append I, and we're gonna say I plus equal one. So what do you think is gonna happen here? Well, not exactly what you expect maybe. Let's take a look, let's run it. So is this what you expected? Not really. We can do many unique things with. So I'm gonna say delete. Let's just say 10. Uh, let's say my list uh, delete, let's say 15. And then let's print this off and display it again. Run the code. And you can see we go up here, but I don't have one zero, 10. And then we don't have uh, one 15. I don't have 15, right? Because we removed those elements from our list, 10 and 15, right? That's pretty great. All right, well done, guys. You now have a working implementation of a linked list in Python. If you enjoyed today's video on linked lists, do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe. Guys, well done. You've now been introduced to your second data structure in Python here on Code with Josh. If you enjoy this, comment and let me know what you thought. If you want to see more advanced linked lists, let me know what other data structures should come next in our series. And remember guys, in the links below, you can get my free Python courses absolutely free, as well as this data structures cheat sheet with my free Python newsletter. If you want to show your support, join my premium newsletter. I'm giving you guys a free trial. All that is in the links below. Until next time, I'll see you guys on next week's episode of Code with Josh. Until then.